Hello YouTube, let's get some winter walking done, eh? I'm here at Orest Head, about a mile outside of Windermere. I'm going to do the Cicerone Guidebook's Tour of the Lake District, which is nine days for the, for the loop itself. It's a circular walk that starts and ends in uh, Ambleside. And then there's like a half day tacked on at the beginning and the end to get between Windermere, where I am now, and Ambleside itself. That's the guidebook. So it's nine days and two half days. I'll give you a spin around, have a look at the views from up here, which are pretty spectacular. Everywhere around here, the views are just absolutely spectacular. It's outstanding. I think it must be the time of day, but there's actually quite a few people out. I'm surprised how many people I've seen. I mean, it's not crowded, crowded, but I must have seen a dozen or so people out. It is about two o'clock, just coming up to two o'clock though. And one chap I was talking to, so he just works locally and he's just out on his lunch hour. So maybe, maybe that's the cause of it right now. But it's good, good to see people out and about. Just coming out past Cross's farm after a little bit of road walking out into the fields again. The plan for today is just do the, the prologue, the kind of Windermere to Ambleside section of the walk. Got, I don't know, like an hour and a half of light left and we're almost there. So that shouldn't be a problem. And then what I might do is, if I don't see anywhere to camp just on the way into Ambleside, I might kind of walk half an hour out the other side and then that will get a half hour start on tomorrow's walk which is about six hours I believe so yeah but we'll see this is a really substantial bridge given that it's just serving a couple of little footpaths seems a little overkill to be honest oh, and another one I wonder how high these rivers get when they're in flood though. Maybe it's warranted. So if you can see the sign over my shoulder, this is Town End Farm that we're going through now. I love these old stone buildings that they, uh, they have here. They're really, really cool. Once again, just absolutely astounding views. Straight on to Ambleside now, a bit of uphill first, and then this just, should just follow the contours around. It's about two miles, I think, just over two miles to go. So if it's all walking like this, I don't know, maybe like half an hour just over. Not all metal road at least, so that's good. Wow. Check out that for some postcard views, eh? Just uh, come round the edge of that hill now, just starting the descent down into Ambleside. Still <laughs> cracking sunsets. About half an hour, yeah. And then maybe you know, the 20 or, 20 or so minutes of light beyond that. What did I say about that sunset? Outstanding. Right, so here we are, just coming through Wars Ahead and to Ambleside. Almost done for the, the, the prologue, the, the kind of Windermere to Ambleside to get to the beginning of the loop. I've not seen anyone to camp the last bit of forest, Skelwig, something like that. I'm not going to try and I butchered the pronunciation. There was all that logging on operations and it was all on hills, so nowhere really to pitch up there. But um, yeah, let's see what we can see just out the other side of town. I think there should be some good options, like not too far. And maybe I'll find a pub and have a pint while I'm passing through as well. <laughs> you can tell you're in the lakes because like every other shop is either a tea room or an outdoor goods shop. Everywhere is looking very festive. 
this time of year. So, as you can see, it's dark outside now. Stopped for a few beers there and a, and a pizza. I, ended up, I went in with the intention of just having one or two and then moving on, but the food seemed really good, so I said, I got a pizza. I ended up having a third beer, so now I'm going to press on. I've got my head torch handy, so it's not going to be a problem walking for an hour in the dark. And it's not late yet, it's only about half six. So, you know, it's just one of those things with uh, hiking in winter, right? <laughs> Some place sounds to believe in town too. <laughs> oh. It's getting a bit chilly now. I'm kind of wishing I got my gloves out of my bag, but they're, I don't know, they're buried in the main compartment somewhere, I think. So I've got a couple of options for where I'm going to camp tonight. One is actually around here, which is a little bit close into town, but there is some open ground. The other is it's about, I'm going to guess, like a 45 minute walk to lower it tarn uh, which is probably what i will do um, that was my original plan for today was was to get to lower it tarn obviously two hours of train delays kind of messed up that and then spending an hour and a half getting food didn't really help matters either <laughs> this is basically what it looks like walking at night the flash from the camera is on but Honestly, it's not making really any difference at all over and above my headlamp, in case you're interested. That's Lower Tarn behind me. This is just the field that's next to it. So I'm just gonna get my tent up here. Uh, it's eight o'clock, it's pitch black, I can't see anything out here, so <laughs> it's gonna be head torches until I get the tent up. And then, yeah, I'll go over the map where I've been today and, uh, and what the plan is for tomorrow and kind of what the plan was for today and how it went wrong. <laughs> a little bit wrong, not too bad. Uh, one small problem, if it looks a bit cosier in here than usual, that's because it is, um, <laughs> the, uh, my trekking poles are absolutely stuck fast. I think it's because that one's damaged, so I've not been kind of collapsing them and extending them out, and they were, they've kind of wedged. I, I couldn't get them to uh, loosen up to extend them. So they're about five centimetres shorter than they should be, which means obviously the ridge line's about five centimetres lower than it should be, and everything's a little bit cosy in here. But I'll have a proper look at that in the morning. Right, I'm going to get my sleeping system set up and open one of the bottles of beer that I bought. Let's try something new for the, uh, the map portion. I'll be careful with that next to the mattress as well. Right, so... That's the whole thing. That's where we got off the train at Windermere. The first bit I really recorded to camera was the, the viewpoint up here. So we had that first look out over Windermere. Made our way up to town end. That was where we stopped for coffee and cake and then follow it round. That was getting some great views and the sunset was kind of as we were contouring around there and then down past Waterhead and then up into Ambleside where we stopped and had a pizza and a couple of beers and then the next bit, and obviously it was dark at this point, so there's not, a, there wasn't a huge amount to see, but I did try and get a few things on camera. We've basically done this portion of it up to Lorig Town, and we're just by the edge of Lorig Town, so just here. So yeah, so tomorrow morning we'll get up, see what the actual views are like, see if we have picked a good pot, a good spot or not, because like I said, it's pitch black. It's, it's, an, it's, it's a nice flat spot, but I don't know what the environment around here is like. And then we're heading on tomorrow to head to Coniston, timing wise. This book says six hours for Ambleside to Coniston, and we're about an hour in already. So I think, given the time of year and conditions, that's, that's probably going to be realistic. I won't go over everything, but the plan for tomorrow evening is when we get to Coniston, the, the finish point here, along the lake here, or the town, whatever, some here, and just, just off the bottom of the map, there's a bunch of sites that should be, I should be able to find some to camp there. So I'm going, probably going to walk about a a mile south from Coniston itself and camp around here and then the day after I'll probably I'll either I think the path for the day after does carry on that way so I'll either just rejoin it or possibly have to walk back into Coniston if I've got that wrong and it heads off more this direction